says it's starting. Go, 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 go. It's it, says, okay. it says live here. This hey, guys. Live. It is Tanya, <laughs> Thrifty Treasures. Welcome to the Reseller Six Pack, episode number 21. And tonight we are bringing you another Bolo show. So we had a lot of fun with the last one. We got some good feedback, so we thought we'd do it again. So, Dwayne, what are you drinking tonight? Oh, I'm going to let you guys down. <laughs> I'm drinking, this is water with Mio in it, which is a, a water flavorer. flavorer. Hold on, I'm hold on. And I have a little bit of this, which is my... Sailor Jerry. Uh, Sailor Jerry, that. right? Yep. But the problem is I can't drink too much because I'm on painkillers. So... Oh. I won't drink a whole lot. So, I got, otherwise, I got to be careful. <laughs> So unless unless somebody makes some serious sales, um, I should be okay. But if somebody starts selling stuff, man, we better call the ER now. <laughs> so oh, you're what? high as a kite right now. No, I'm not high as a kite, but I just don't want to mix too much. I understand. Right. So why are you on painkillers? Is it because of last weekend? No, it's because I'm a lame ass old fart last yesterday and I did a bunch of yard work and I'm sore as hell. <laughs> So, <laughs> wait. So you raked some leaves, and you then you took a bottle of pain pill. Pain pills? Is that what, Not quite. I mean, I did. A, I raked a lot of leaves. I trimmed a lot of bushes. I mowed the lawn again, really uh, uh, much lower. So it was really a pain. Um, old, old fat. You know. So I woke oh, up I this know. morning going, oh, oh my god, what am I gonna do? So. Pop a little, uh, I have a bad back because I'm fat. So um, I have some pain killers. <laughs> how, many and, things uh, do you, how many things do you follow with because I'm fat? I mean, fat seems to be kind of hurting. Like, I, I'm saying this because I'm fat. Oh, I know. It, well, I just, that's my excuse for everything. You know, so. Yeah. No, no, it's valid, I guess. <laughs> no, it's just, it's be, the, because I'm overweight, that's why I have these problems. So, but um yeah, so that's what I, I'm drinking, water and a little bit of booze. <laughs> All right, Shane, what are you drinking? So I'm kind of going old school, and I got some Paps Blue Ribbon. Um, uh, PBR. <laughs> yep, PBR, so I'm drinking that, and then I'll probably end up taking one shot of this stuff, but it has oh, a, yeah. maximum, a maximum of one shot, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Lonnie, Definitely. what are you drinking? Good. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Lonnie, also known as Garage Flips on the YouTube world. Uh, I am drinking. I posted a picture of it in our Facebook group, Tanya, the Facebook group you made. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a picture of my <laughs> bottle of moonshine. I got a bottle of shine, y'all. 103 proof. So, hey, this is great. See, I'm I'm taking it easy. You guys are making it up. You got moonshine <laughs> and you got that Canadian, you know, hot stuff there. And I've got <laughs> this much in my little drink here and i've got it mixed i'm cutting it with uh some like fruit punch minute made some kind of fruit punch stuff oh uh, wow jungle juice <laughs> i'm i'm feeling it already it's like it's hitting pretty hard already so ought to be a good show for me <laughs> i don't know about for you guys but i might enjoy it right and i'm what about you? there you go uh trusty moscato <laughs> Scotto. Excellent. Oh, Candace bought a bottle. I bought Candace a bottle of that when we were at the store when I bought this. What brand did you buy? Uh hell, I don't know. I don't know. It just it's like a magnum, like a bigger bottle. <laughs> well, and it's Moscato. And it's six percent alcohol, I think. Yeah, I can't remember. It's like a little weaker. It's a little weaker than wine, right? Yeah, I don't know. I just think it tastes good. Yeah, Moscato's just a dessert wine. So it's a little sweeter than most wines. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the one that I'm drinking is just the cheap Sutter Home, like the four pack that you can buy. But my mom told me that uh, Barefoot Moscato is a whole lot better. So I have a bottle of that in the refrigerator, but I just, I didn't want to open a whole bottle for one little glass. <laughs> but I might have to next weekend if I don't buy any more minis. Well, yeah. Isn't now, and isn't next week your uh, witch's brew thing? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, it's Saturday night, you guys. Oh, my goodness. I have so much work to do. So, are, so we're not going to have a – you're not going to be on the six-pack then, huh? 
No, it's um, I won't be able to show up for oh, the Sunday. Um, We're on su- today. It must be auction show. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh boy, somebody <laughs> needs to cut Lonnie off. My gosh, I need another drink. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> it is cool though. Look, check it out. It's in a jar, but then it's got like this thing on top, and they actually put huh. they put a cork in it, like at the top of the jar. Oh, that is so cool. So it's really pours, cool. pours easy. So I thought it was neat. All right, so bolos. Who wants to start it out? Lonnie. Ooh, ooh I want to go. <laughs> and how, how, how about our little four pack here tonight? Uh, as Dwayne said, we have a little four pack of wine coolers with us. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's just, uh, just us four. <laughs> All right, we're going to make it happen. Jake, right, my feelings are hot. Okay, guys, so, so BOLO, BOLO, if you don't know, stands for Be on the Lookout. So these are items that we are on, that we are being on the lookout for. That's probably not grammatically correct. Um, but it's okay. This, <laughs> this is stuff, I'm going to share some stuff that I look for when I'm at garage sales a lot. Some of it's lower value, some of it's higher value, but I've tried to pick some stuff out that some of you guys may not typically buy. So maybe you could get some buying ideas. Um, the first thing I'm going to start with, I'm going to share screen real quick. You see my screen okay, uh, Tanya? Yes. Yes, sir. And everybody. So this is something I've been looking out for, and I know that Andy Parrothead Picker, he posted a cool pair um, just the other day. Converse guys sell well for me. This is a pair of uh, black, I call it the Converse Chuck Taylor All-Star Core High Unisex All Black. Man, that's like keyword loaded there. Um, <laughs> but these are really cool. They're just, you know, all black. Look for look for Converse. There's so many that have really cool designs on them. Uh, I have another pair here somewhere. Okay, yeah, these that I showed on Instagram a while back. Um, and I was just showing on Instagram the the difference between on the right is before and then on the left is after a uh, magic eraser treatment. Mm-hmm. So, but these shoes here, they would have sold too for probably about twenty to thirty dollars somewhere in there. But my wife stole them from me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I like that uh, color. My little girl has that color too. Yep. So that's that's my first bolo is Converse uh, Converse shoes, and man, they have some like great designs. The more the more wacky they are. Like I sold a pair of unicorn design Converse probably about six months ago. They sold for like seventy bucks instantly. I sold them on Facebook. They sold so quick on the resellers. Uh, the Reseller Society Facebook group. I post them like, hey, look at these shoes. Somebody bought them from me. I wasn't trying to. <laughs> but, I mean, Converse are just super hot. That's my first bolo. Yeah, Check out Converse. Definitely. Be careful because, you know, Chris Caron, he still will knock you out for that. You know, he'll I did, kick you off. <laughs> it, wasn't on, it was not on purpose. I was just like, hey, look at cool I know. I'm just teasing. <laughs> <laughs> Shane, what do you got? So... My bolo is kind of similar to Lonnie's. It's a canvas shoe. Um, It's a vintage canvas shoe. And a lot of vintage canvas shoes sell for really good money. Um, You have a lot of different ones. Um, You have like a, I can't remember any of the names, Paul something. You have like Keds or something like that. But then you also have lacrosse. And lacrosse is like the holy, almost like the holy grail of vintage canvas shoes. So I'm going to show a screen share real quick um, from my Instagram. It's okay, Tanya, really. I'm sorry. I just keep forgetting. I didn't have the screen locked on Shane. I keep forgetting. Well, that's okay. He didn't show anything. Okay. Yeah. So these. Uh, He said he he was going to share his screen. You went, oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. I know. (laughs) I still had the screen locked on Lonnie. That's why. (laughs) Sorry. So these. No, you're fine. So these are the shoes right here, and they're a little bit wacky colored, but they're lacrosse Bart Starr editions. And Bart Starr was like a super famous football player back in like the 60s and I think 70s. And these sold on Instagram 
for two hundred and sixty dollars. Wow! And I paid a dollar ninety nine for him. That's amazing. Not, not bad. Yeah. And they're super rare, the Bart Stars. So I knew I was actually like I was trying to sell them on Instagram. They sold within like three to four minutes maybe even less, maybe like two minutes. I didn't expect them to sell fast. Um, I was actually making the eBay listing and I got down to the description and they sold. Shane, <laughs> uh, how did you, how did you know how to price those? Like, were you able to find comps on these shoes? No, I found one comp on eBay and it was on an auction and they sold for $119 on auction. So that tells me nice. probably priced it too low. I found one active listing for like 240 for the high tops. Mine were the low tops and the low tops are a little bit more rare. To be honest, I didn't even know what they were when I went into the thrift store. I just seen some shoes that looked like they were vintage and I picked them up and said, these look cool. And I seen the back. And as soon as I seen lacrosse, I'm like, Oh man, cause I've heard of the brand and I've never, ever found it. Um, and as soon as I seen Bart star, I'm like, I think that's something that's pretty that's pretty rare. So, so I looked it up. Can you oh, go ahead? I was just gonna say, can you type the name of that in the chat yeah. so that people so it's La, Lacrosse Bart Star? Yep, absolutely. And all so like they, lacrosse, uh lacrosse like brand. Okay. Is um, it lacrosse or lacrosse? Brand, pretty good. No, lacrosse. I saw you saw I saw the shoe on uh oh, okay. Instagram or whatever. It's lacrosse. Hi Jory. Hey Jory. Hey. How's it going, guys? Thanks for joining us. Hey, Jory, what's up? Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, nothing. What are you drinking just... tonight? <laughs> nothing. I drank. I drank beer earlier in the day, and I got nothing left to drink. I well, <laughs> I could drink straight whiskey, but I'd prefer not to. Come on, Jory, <laughs> join me. Join me with. The, I got the b bottle of moon or oh. jar of moonshine here. Yeah, he's drinking moonshine. Shane's something. drinking. Shane's drinking your Canadian whiskey. I mean, you should at least drink with him. Join me. I guess so. Okay, I'll go get some. How is it? Dude? It's strong. Isn't it? Oh, it's it's hell strong. It's like more than strong. It's like really, really like I took a whole shot the first time, and like an hour later, I'm like, I have a hangover. Like I got a headache. I don't doubt it. It's yeah, it's pretty strong stuff. Barb is in the chat saying Tanya is taking notes. Tanya is always taking notes. I'm I am this. taking notes. <laughs> She's the thinker. She's the thinker of the group, guys. I mean, most everything that we come up with, we don't. She does. And we just <laughs> channels it to us. <laughs> so it makes me it makes me feel so good though. Whenever I'm talking to Tanya, and and, and all of a sudden I see her grab her notebook and start writing. I'm like, ooh, I said something good. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, y'all are sweet. So, Dwayne, what do you got? Okay, well, most of you know I do mostly clothing. So, let me go ahead and do my little screen share. Are you going to say, oh, oh, or? Uh, oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh thank no. you for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> let me lock All, right. All right. So, um, this is a this is a brand name of jeans that uh, does really well for me. As you can see, they sell for about, usually about 25 bucks with shipping on top. Of, you know in a padded flat rate so um, they're Adriano Goldschmidt okay they make men and women's jeans this is actually an indigo I, I put black but they're actually indigo it's mm. an indigo wash um, they have a couple of different um, model numbers for example like this one's called the angel it's the type of fit and everything which is this one's a, a low-rise boot cut um, angels a good one for women's um, for men protege is a pretty decent one um, and hero um, they sell really fast for me um, especially if they're in decent shape uh, even with a little bit of fraying they still sell really well awesome I think I have a pair of those I need to get listed yeah and and they're they're not that hard to find I mean they're, they're out there it's not something you know like the holy grails that you never see hey Dwayne can I ask you something real, those are nice. quick about that because I'm kind of a starter with clothing um, sure. Can you talk to me about indigo wash? I don't know exactly what that means. Okay, indigo wash is kind of like a. All right, you know, you, you understand dark, medium, and light washes, right? Obviously, that's just the yeah. the color of blue they are. Well, indigo is kind of like a grayish. Um, indigo is actually a purple, but when you see it, let me show you one more time here. Is it because it's, it's kind of it's not looking? a blue? 
Yeah, and it, and it's kind of like a off black. You know, they're not quite black, but they're not blue. They're kind of in the middle, but they're not mm -hmm. gray. So once you see them, you'll you'll see you'll know. Um, like I said, this is a, a very much an indigo coloring. Um, no, dude, I've got a lot of jeans that are that color already. I just didn't know it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. Yeah, no, there are. I there. never knew that's what it was called. Yeah, I mean, indigo something. is a, is one of those um, jeans that are kind of sought after now because not a lot of people like the straight black ones. Um, just because they show a lot of, uh, you know, anything that gets on them that shows. Um, but they want to do something different than blue. So they kind of go with this this off, this off darker bluish purple color. Um, it looks yeah, kind of cool. I like it. Yeah, it cool. uh, a lot of people do like it. So mm -hmm. Yeah, those are nice. All right. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, they sell for me really quickly. I mean, within a couple of days, if, if I – if I and I usually price them right about twenty five bucks. Um, I can get a little bit more for some of the uh, men's jeans are a little bit higher, um, but uh, they sell through pretty quickly. Awesome. And now off to you, Tanya. Okay, so I wanted to share uh, Joan Rivers jewelry. Mm. It's very collectible, and it sells really well. If I could get my screen share going over here. And let's see, pick a window. But now I got to get over to that window. I have too many windows open. <laughs> okay, can you see? Mm hmm. Okay, so. Lock it to you, though. Oh, okay, hang on. <laughs> or can you? No, you can't. Uh, it's okay. Go ahead. Yeah, we'll just, we'll I just can. shut up. I can't. Wow. Okay. Is that yours? <laughs> no, no. Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> No, these are not mine, but I just wanted to show you guys how well they can sell. So wow. um, the brooches, and they're very ornate. And I sold a pair. Uh, I went to the Green Room meetup in Austin over the summer, and I picked up a couple pair of the Joan Rivers earrings at a thrift store, and I paid $3 each, and they sold for $24.99 each. So I turned a $6 uh, you know, purchase into a $50 flip. And then this is what the hallmark looks like. Oh, cool! Wow. Oh, that's a tough, that's a really hard one to understand. There, I think yeah. I can. I think I can figure it out. Now. <laughs> how, how, did, how did you know it's Joan Rivers? Uh, yeah, it said, right. It said We're Joan Rivers. Trying to look that up. <laughs> <laughs> so, was it worth as much before she died? Is it? Did it go up in price a lot after she died, Tong? Or do you know? That's a good question. I really don't know, but I would imagine that it does. That it did it did for sure. I guess there's not new Joan. Did she design it herself? Like, oh, gosh, I didn't know you were going to ask me these questions. I no, don't no, know. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't. <laughs> no, I mean they're good questions. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I know some of these cele celebs. They'll like design it themselves, and some of them will like lend their name to another designer. You know? Yeah, I think it was solely her because you know it's just her name as far as like the maker's mark on there. She was always kind of tacky, wasn't she? I mean, I don't know fashion. <laughs> I think more. I think it's called gaudy. Yeah, that's gaudy. exactly what I was about to say, Dwayne. Gaudy. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. gaudy. Yes. You find that a lot of older women will wear the gaudy jewelry. As a matter of fact, I'm borderline getting there myself. I love, you know, the the big gaudy jewelry. And you know, the older you get, you just don't care what other people think as much as you did when you were young. So um, I'm like that lady. What's her name? Eiffel. Eiffel. I always forget how to say her name. But she's an older lady, and she's got the short white hair. Maybe somebody in the chat will let us know. Um, but, yeah, she wears bangles all up and down her arms, and she has so much fun with it. She's awesome. Cool. Good one. So, yeah, Jory, did you bring a, a bolo? I got a couple screen shares open. Yeah, I got one I can share. Uh, let me hit the screen share button. Oh, man, I didn't do my little thing, the lower third, guys. There we go. Can you see it? Yes. Oops. Yes. So, yeah, this is one of them, an IBM. Actually, any, anything IBM that's wow. mid-'80s is usually worth good money, but that one sold 125 Click on him, Tanya. Oh, I did. Oh, okay. Okay, just making yeah, sure. It's got the white line around in the box. Yeah, we, we just don't, no, that's fine. We don't see it on our end, that's all. Right. I yeah, is that how it works out? What about in the chat? Am I locked on jewelry, you guys? So typewriters, that's what I wanted to share. There's a Smith and Corona one, XD4800. It sold for 95. And you want to watch for ones that have built-in dictionaries and an erase mode on them. 
I okay, have, so you're... I have one for sale like that right now, Smith Corona. Uh, I think I might have it priced a little high. So are are there some that you don't buy jewelry, like you would say uh, don't bother with? If they're electronic, I stay away from the ones that don't have the erase and that don't have the built-in dictionary because they're kind of the cheaper ones. The more industrial ones have built-in dictionaries. In Canada, if you can get the French-English combo dictionary, it's worth more. Um, and yeah, the erase mode, if you can erase it, it's like a secondary ribbon that goes over top of the ink ribbon. Right. And it just, yeah, it's like white out. It basically slams on it. Yeah, so, and I noticed you're offering free shipping on that. How does yeah. it pricey to ship it? Uh, I could probably ship it. The most it would cost me to ship in Canada would be about 28 to 30 bucks. It'd be relatively the same to ship to the U.S., $35. Okay. And I, I was probably about $4 on that one at the Goodwill. So did you get that from your e-waste guy? Or no, no you said Goodwill. That one was Goodwill buy, yeah. The other one was an e-waste guy, though. Okay. The IBM one. So I know the IBM ones, Jory, the older ones, not. I think they're probably like before that. It's like IBM Selectric. Yep. One, two, oh yeah, the really old ones. Yeah, uh, this one's old. Hey. This one was eighty. He's up I on think. the old there, Jory. <laughs> I, I went to school. I had to learn to type on those damn things. <laughs> Wait, are you kidding me, man, dude? I learned. I literally I learned to type on a manual typewriter. Yeah, same here. <laughs> that had no letters. It didn't have any letters on the keys. And then at the end of the carriage, you know, at the end of the line, it would ding when you were like within five characters or whatever, and you'd have to slap that thing. So I know you're uh, what? How old are you now, Jory? Twenty eight. I'll be I'll be thirty in December. Thirty. Okay. Yeah. He's See, a baby. Right. He's a youngster. How old are you, Shane? Right. <laughs> you're in mid thirties. I just turned thirty in July. Oh, okay. So oh, he's a baby oh, too. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> you, you, you know the guys. one here. You know, we used to be pretty Dwayne and Tanya. Now they, yo, no, no, we used to take typing. Now the kids take freaking keyboard. They even changed the name of it. I know, right? So, yeah, I know. It's crazy. I know. I told my kids, oh, yeah, when I went to school, they didn't even have computers. And they're looking at me like, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wrote. And we had those typewriters. And if you made a mistake, you started over because <laughs> they didn't have the correction tape yet. <laughs> yeah. Jory, um, Don Maserati is asking in the chat, what was the name of the typewriter again? Uh, the first one was an IBM Wire, or no, Wheel Writer 3. Yeah. And the other one was a uh, Smith and Krona uh, XD4800. You either want electronic ones or on the opposite end of the spectrum, the super old ones that are black with the gold trimming and stuff like that. They're usually made out of cast and heavy as hell. Right. The, the, the wheel writer refers to, uh, man, that's nostalgia for me. The wheel writer refers to the daisy wheel, right? Oh, yeah. Where it, went, so, yeah, yeah. it would turn and, and then slap and then turn and sh yeah. Yeah. They were like super loud, like daisy wheel printers. Like, yeah, it's really loud. <laughs> <laughs> the old dot matrix stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've sold a few Apple printers too, old dot matrix printers. I know. I saw your video on cleaning one up. What, what was that called? A uh, uh, image two or something like that. Image okay. writer? No. No. Image. Uh, I can probably find out. It was a while ago. I think it sold for a hundred dollars too. Yeah, I remember that. Mm -hmm. You you put it through the full treatment, like you. It was yellowed or something when you got it. I yeah. think. Yeah. Yeah. Turn the plastic back to white. Yeah. With Salon Care 40 hair cream. If you ever have yellow plastic and UV light, that's what fixes it. Wow. All right, Better Lonnie. write that down, Tanya. <laughs> oh, is it on me again? Okay. Yep. All right. So the next one I'm going to talk about, and I think Jory may have talked about something similar to this. Can y'all see my screen okay? Ah, chess, chess, chess uh, clocks, right? Nice. So, cool. and I'm not talking just chess clocks. I'm talking chess, okay? Chess stuff in general. Mm -hmm. uh, I've done pretty well. Like this chess clock, I think I bought it for five. And this thing was like really just mint, like from the 70s. Chess clocks do well. Uh, chess sets do well. This one, this is a stupid Instagram post I made where I had to like glue the, glue this piece back together, whatever. And all the people are gathered around worried about them, the other pieces. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do when I'm bored, right? So, but, but the, you know, these kind of 
like unique kind of chess sets do really well. Um, this was actually from a class. I got the whole story and I put it in my listing. Uh, this is a guy's ex-girlfriend made this for him in a uh, uh, ceramics class. So wow. these came from molds and I got the, the year and her name and the story. And mm. I talked to the, the wife and, hey, did this bother you that he still had this all these years? You know, like it was like 40 years old, right? And uh, so it, that's one thing I would mention too. When you're buying stuff, especially garage sales, I forget a lot of times, get the story. Yeah. Because you, yeah. Oh, yeah. You could totally use that story in your listing, and people love a story. They really yeah, do. I agree. Here's another set I bought. Uh, this is an Italian metal chess set. I remember set. that one. Yeah. And, that one's really nice. And it sold really, really well. Uh, you know, you want to look for unique, like you don't see metal chess sets very often. You'll see a lot of like Mexican Onyx sets. Those aren't so hot. Like Tanya, I'll bet you, you see a lot of Onyx out there. Um, the black ones? Like uh, Onyx can be black or white or gray or whatever, but I know they sell a lot of Onyx, uh, you know, over the border. <laughs> like it's a Mexico. stone, right? It's a stone. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I like, guess I'm not really looking for it. I haven't noticed a whole lot. Okay. Well, I, I'll tell you guys, like Onyx doesn't sell as well, but if you find like carved wood, um, you know, older sets, like in this case, metal, in the other case, ceramic, interesting sets. And you can see like these guys actually had little pillow, almost like little caskets to lay down in, you know, yeah, in the case that's there. Wow. So, that's really cool. Yeah. And, and one other thing I would say about chess is a lot of times I'll see um, at sales, I'll see like books and there's a good chance that if somebody has one chess book, they have a lot of chess books and individual chess books won't necessarily be worth a lot of money. But if you can buy like say 10 to 15 chess books all at once, you can make a big lot and you can make some decent money on eBay. Yeah. Are those wow. hard to show? What's that? Chess sets? Yeah. They can be very hard to ship yeah. that's a great question uh the ceramic set i actually like i had each and every piece bubble wrapped them up you know put them in a box i had like two boxes of pieces that i double box and I had the board i mean it was a big fiasco it was worth it wow you can but, get ones that are like slate tables too for the playing tables and they're hard to ship and, and jory i know that you um showed not too long i don't remember where you showed it that electronic chess game the chess set you had phantom chess is what it was called phantom force chess so you can set all the pieces up and you can play against a computer and it uses magnets to actually move the pieces across the board for you wow, wow. so you punch in like c8 on the chess piece for your one pawn or whatever and he'll move up on its own with a magnet and uh, they're like 350 400 depending on the model of them Wow, I think I sold mine for three twenty-five or three forty. It was a few months back. So wow. we got a super chat from Krillin. He says, "Over the border, are you sourcing in Mexico?" <laughs> well, I mean, the Mexican <laughs> stuff ends up in the United States a lot of times. So you do like I see Onyx all the time. Mm -hmm. um, we got a lot of Mexican sales. silver up here. And, yeah, be careful with that Mexican silver, by the way. Um, <laughs> there's lots of fake Mexican silver yeah, out yeah. there. <laughs> Tony, I'm, well, surprised thanks, you I'm surprised you don't see Onyx uh, there in Houston. Because, I mean, it's right. right I guess I'm not there. really schooled on it. I don't really know what I'm looking for, I don't guess. Okay, you know what? Let me pull one up real quick while it's still kind of on me. Onyx. I'll pull up an Onyx chess set. All right, let me lock it on you. And I'll show you what an Onyx chess set looks like. I would be scared to ship it. You know how I am about breakables lately. Oh, I'm not telling you. By the way, I'm not telling you to buy Onyx. Um, I don't think it does that well. Maybe I'm okay. wrong. Um, can you oh, see yeah. my screen? Yeah, I see like bookends all the time made from that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You, you'll yeah. see like big knights, uh, like knights from, you know, like this piece right there. Uh, that are made into big bookends and stuff like that. It yeah. sells okay. If you can get it really cheap, you might be able to do a little something with it. But uh, overall, this, but this is Onyx. 
Okay. This, this is a very, me. that's an abstract set there. They make sets that are more uh, defined. Yeah. Usually yeah. like straight black and straight white. No, I just mean like the shape. The shape is pretty rough. On oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, and that's the other thing that I was going to say, Lonnie, about your chess sets is they, they they make so many different kinds. You know, you'll have some that are, you know, you can get Lord of the Rings, you know, where all the pawns are hobbits. And, you know, I mean, yep. the thing about chess sets is any any kind of genre you're looking for, they make a chess set for it. It's kind of like Monopoly, right? Yeah, it's just yeah. like Monopoly. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Although Monopoly ha probably has more versions than chess. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> probably more players, too. <laughs> All right, Shane, you're up. All right, so my next bolo is going to be uh, Oakley shirts, new with tags. I've, I've found them several times at thrift stores, and they've been new with tags. But there's different types of Oakley as well. Um, and I'm going to just really quick to show you one of my eBay listings. And so this one was the Oakley <laughs> icon. And the Oakley icon, it was new with tags. Uh, it sold for eighteen ninety nine within, I think, two days. Um, and the Oakley icon, this was a plain one, but generally the icon is the brand of Oakley that is actually the tactical Oakley brand that's used by police departments and stuff like that. Oh, so wow. that's really good stuff to pick up. But this was a very plain one. So it just had a little logo on the back, and it's usually a skull with a lightning bolt. And it... That's what I priced at that. Very, um, the the Oakley icon has bigger logos and they're a lot cooler. And this one was just a really small Oakley icon logo on the back. Yeah, I think I've sold like a bag, at an Oakley tactical bag before. It seems like I can't remember though, but it definitely sounds familiar. And I've heard. Yeah, they make bags too, and they're really, really, really cool. Um, yeah, but they, it sells really well. I love it. I, I didn't know about that. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, Dwayne, you're up. Am? <laughs> okay. Um, I'm pulling one up right now. Um, so one of the ones that I, one of the, for me, is uh, cool. It's called cool. And it's spelled K-U-H-L. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's more, it's kind of a hiking, camping shirt. Um, but uh, let me see, here's the label right there. It's got the two, the U with the, I can't remember what that's called, the Ugloom or some weird thing, two dots over the U. Um, and they're usually, they, they sell very quickly for me. I don't even know why. I, I don't, um, I don't necessarily, I think they're great shirts, but I don't, I don't see the, the draw. Um, and they're not a, you know, a fancy shirt either. That's just kind of a hiking shirt. It's not a, you know, wicking shirt or anything like that. But uh, that name, K-U-H-L, um, does pretty good. So. Yeah, I first heard Chris, the Bonafide Hustler, um, mm -hmm. talk about that selling well. So definitely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, my next one is going to be, um, so you guys know I love to sell the Hawaiian shirts, and I've never found one out in the wild myself, but the brand is Duke Kahana, Kahana Nomoko. Hopefully I said that right. So Yeah, easy for you to say. <laughs> wow. <laughs> right, let me see. I know, I'm sorry. It takes me forever to screen share. Y'all just talk amongst yourselves. Uh-huh. Yeah, I can't find it. It's not popping up for me. So I don't okay, think I'm going to leave. Wait, what, 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 what's the problem, Tanya? I'm, I'm getting it. I'm just slow. Hang on. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I wasn't trying to rush you. No, don't rush me. Gosh. Okay, can you see my screen? I see Joan Rivers. Okay, I'm not. I think that's, I gotta... that's a Joan Rivers piece. I'm, I'm going to use my expert okay. opinion. Joan All right, Rivers. here we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here are some um, shirts that have sold, and Holy it seems like not all of them sell for a lot of money, but there are some that do. I guess the ones that sell for a lot are a lot older. So, so that brand, yeah. that K, yeah. that K name is something to look out for. Look at that name. Yeah, let me pull up the label so you can see it. Can you say that name? Me? Sure, he did. Why are you doing that? 
Kahana Namoko? <laughs> Kahana Namoko. Kahana, Kahana oh, Namoko. That's pretty good. Okay. <laughs> I think you did it. That's right. Now leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hopefully, they have a picture here of the label. Uh, but they only have three picks. Oh, here it is. I do not love their background. Was that pegboard? Okay, so here's the label. It does look really old, doesn't it? Gahana yeah, it does, Moko. Huh? Oh, that's cool. Watch for those. Yeah. All right. Unlock me. Okay, after me is Jory. Okay. Um, the next thing I guess I can share is I don't know if you'll ever come across these much, but there we go. It's a Brailler, a Perkins Brailler. It's oh, for cool. typing for blind people, so you can make messages for blind people, I guess. Um, this is actually the second one I found. The first one was out of Goodwill, and then the second one came out of uh, eway Spin. And oh, wow. Perkins Brailler still makes Brailler's today, I found out, and they're, I guess, one of the better brands to watch for. That looks like a military badge on the front of that thing. It looks like it's military tagged. What is that tag? Right there. Uh, yeah, the bottom. Designed by Abraham. Manufactured and distributed by Howe Memorial Press. That's Perkins cool. Scooter for the Blind, made in the USA. Yeah, the, and they got a big roller on the back where it kind of indents the paper. The design is really nice. That and it's uh, got that that hammered look to it. That, yeah, that hammered kind of paint look. Yeah. And I mean, this one was even damaged. The rollers kind of split in the backside there, but it still sold for a premium price. Yeah, what did it sell for? Uh, one nine. No, that's not true. I took an offer for one sixty. Wow, that's still a great price, though. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if you find them without, you know, damage on the back for those rollers, then they tend to bring 225, 250. So, so Jory, what do wow. like? Is there a modern version of this brailler brailler machine? There is, but they don't look much different. They kind of do the same sort of thing. I just figured, like the colors are a little different. They look a little more modern, but overall, it's like the same five or six keys on the front with that big black part on the back and it. Are there Braille paper. printers? Like, can you buy a Braille printer for your computer? Like, if I wanted to print, like... I bet you you could. I've never looked that up. Never even thought about it. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, I don't think we've ad addressed this uh, question in the chat. Grandma Wrinkles says, does anybody know a Levi's expert? I do. She says that she has a very unusual pair of old Levi's that I need to find out more about. No care tag, which is probably why the RN number would have been. I, I have a perfect spot for her. Um, that is the Reseller Society. Post it in the Reseller Society and tag this man right here. Uh, he used to actually have a business, I think, where he sold like a lot of Levi's. Like we're talking like probably 30, 40 years. He is a Levi's expert. Larry Posner or Posner. Uh, just tag him in your post in the reseller society and I'm sure he'll be able to tell you exactly what you want to know. And, wow. and there's a lot of other people too. Tinner up awesome. to Lonnie. They do have electronic braille printers. And I they're, anywhere, yeah, they're anywhere from $200 all the way up to a thousand. Another Bolo. <laughs> yeah. Electronic <laughs> ones. <laughs> okay. Lonnie, you're up again already. Oh boy. Here we go. All right. Okay, so my next one, guys, this is an easy one. Uh, I all, I've always said that you should buy pretty much anything Sony, and I'm going to go ahead and say that again. Buy anything Sony that you find that's a pretty decent shape. Agreed. It's not going to sell a lot of times for, like, monster money, but it's going to sell for decent money, and it's going to sell fast. Like this, and it goes across a whole spectrum of things. Like this is a pair of, uh, I bought this for a dollar at a, at a yard sale. This is just a pair of Sony sports, uh, Sony sports Walkman headset here all for 21. This is a DCR DVD one Oh three. This is not even an expensive one. You'll see these all the time at yard sales. These little handy cams, uh, they sell, 
it's, it's like printing money when you find these things. Uh, Jory, I bet you sell a lot of these too. I love finding Sony, anything. Sony Discmans, the cassette players, uh, the handy cams like you have. Even some of the old Sony MP3 music players I've sold. And not yeah. for huge dollars, but like 15, 20 bucks really quick on something like that. Yeah, the, I mean, the thing is, Sony is not like a premium brand, but it was a really good brand yeah. that they sold a lot of. They sold a hell of a lot of Sony back in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. So there's a lot of it out there. People love it. Here's another thing you can sell. I think I, I, think I got about $100 for this, uh, just a jam box. This is the oh, old wow. Instagram post. Um, but look, you know, one reason that Sony did well is they had great design. Like, especially in the 90s, and I'd, I'd say in the 90s, Sony's design was tops. Yeah, it was. It was always so colorful and out there. Yeah. And um, yeah. now, of course, Apple's design, I guess, is probably number one. But people love that Sony sports design, the Sony 90s look. So if it's Sony and you think it works and you can get it cheap, you should be buying it. That's my bolo. I have one. Can I show it to you? Mm -hmm. It is. It is a a Sony that I sold here recently. Um, it's a oh, video wow. Walkman. Nice. Video eight is what it is. Okay, and this I actually sold it to a guy wow. in India, and uh, so it ended up going for three. I think it was three twenty shipped. That's so, awesome. I, and it had the it had two batteries. It had a hard case that I got with it. Oh wow! Um, it had the the you know a couple of battery packs and all the cables and stuff like that. But that's what it is right there, the GV200. They make another one that's a GV200, and there's another letter G or something like that was was a little bit different. But So anything in this video 8 as well because, uh, uh, you know, they don't do a lot with it. So anytime you can get something that's a little bit off-brand or off, you know, a little bit different, even like uh, Betamax, you know, Sony Betamax is uh, – yeah, Kr make good money. Yeah, Krillin's in the chat saying Sony Bolo Beta Player. He's right. I I think about eight months ago or so, I bought a Betamax player. Uh, I tested it. It didn't work. And I was going to say. I still sorry, got like go 70, 80 bucks for it. So, wow. Right. You know. Super common to break the Sony Betamaxes. Like super, it's always either the, the head stops spinning or the little read write part for the head gets way too clogged up with dirt and it doesn't play the tapes anymore. You know what happened with mine, Jory? I actually shot a video. I actually shot a video on this, Jory. Um, I had the top off because yeah. it wasn't working at first. I put a tape in and it spun up and I'm like, oh, wow, it's working, guys. And then it went boom. Never, <laughs> never ran again. <laughs> <laughs> so probably like a, one of the transistors in it or something or a resistor popped maybe lost a capacitor. Who knows? At that point, I was like, okay, as is. But it's There's so many moving parts in them. I was going to say, it's better that it happened to you before you sold it as working and then it happened to them as soon as they spun it up. That's, that's true. That's, that's the best thing about selling as is is because <laughs> right. like if, you, if you're careful, like if you can do your description well and you do your condition right, and you say no guarantees, no – people slip up a lot of times. They want to get greedy, and they want to guarantee certain facets of the operations. But all they're doing is they're opening themselves up for liability. So if you do it right, you can do great with as-is, sold as-is, parts only, because there's no liability on you. What they're going to say, it doesn't work? I told you it didn't friggin' work. Yeah. Right? Okay. So. I have to read something in the chat. So – Casey, Jory's wife, says, all right, guys, I made Jory the most random drink because we have no mix. Perhaps he's brave enough to try it. <laughs> she did. She brought it up Jory. to me. It's there, there's what it looks like. It's a lemonade. Did she, te did she tell you what it was? <laughs> it looks like a pina colada. There's, there's whiskey in it. It smells like the Japanese whiskey we have. <laughs> Casey? It's a whiskey sour. <laughs> it's not How bad. is it? It's real sour. It's not bad. It's really sour. Very lemony, but it's whiskey sour. It's not Casey, too bad. Casey's saying whiskey. Um, let's call it sour and a mystery ingredient. She needs to name that drink. We'll call it a, a Casey sour, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> sour. It's it's heartburn in a glass. It's not bad though. But you can pour whiskey in anything and make it not bad. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> Okay, Shane, you're up. 
All right. So my next bolo is going to be a polo Ralph Lauren item. It's a polo bolo. Are you serious? Polo bolo. Yeah. It's a polo <laughs> bolo. And that rhymes too. And it's going to be polo Ralph Lauren sport. Polo sport is super hot. Honestly, um, this just polo, just blue, no design, no nothing. It has a little, little, it don't even have a symbol on it because this, this will probably sell anywhere from 25 to 40, um, depending on, and this is a little bit smaller size, so it may do like 25-ish, but I've seen them go as high as like 30 to 40. That's awesome. I recently got a um, Polo Sport bag. It's like, um, it's a real pretty green color and it has that little black line on it. Yeah. That was I haven't looked so at it yet. Can y'all say, so Can y'all yeah, say, yeah, some of the Polo Sport stuff will sell over, over 150 to 200, just depending on, on the colorway and stuff like that. Oh, wow. I got to get that bag listed. Hey, can you say Polo like Paul Cantu does? How does he say it? I, I don't know. I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> it's a very distinguished, like British sound to it, to make it sound like really fancy. We got that Polo Ralph Lauren. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> you know, apparently he got his own place recently, and I still haven't watched the video. But um, yeah, I guess he got him a little apartment. So I have to go check out that video. His videos are, are just so funny to watch. Like, he's so colorful. Hysterical. Yes, yeah. he is. Yes. That's a great way to describe him, for sure. You know, I think that's a good lesson for people that make YouTube videos, is that, like, before Paul did – it's a good lesson for me, I know, too. Yeah. Before Paul did what he does, nobody else was freaking doing it, and that's what makes him special and popular, and just mm -hmm. people love it. Mm -hmm. So. Definitely. You know, it's easy to get caught in a trap where you're doing stuff everybody else does. He didn't do that. So that's why he's so successful. That's true. Yeah. Right. I haven't seen him in a while, too. Like, I'll see he'll post at the Goodwill, like, right down the house from me. Right down the house from me. Right down the street from me. But um, <laughs> I always miss him lately. It's been a while since I've seen him. So Maybe he's dodging you. He probably uh, is. <laughs> I'm sure he is. That's exactly. And that crazy Tanya lady keeps Tanya. talking to me. Tanya, hey, all, Grandma won't leave me alone. Tanya, all I'm going to tell you <laughs> is don't read the comments of the video that you're in, although you probably already did. I don't uh, even remember. Uh, you have the link. I don't even remember what video it is. You, you, you remember when you were in one of Paul Cantu's videos? I do, but I don't remember. I don't have uh, the chat was talking. I mean, the comments were talking about you, and they uh, were either like complimentary yeah. or insulting, depending on how you. How Are you serious? <laughs> don't say what episode it was. I'm gonna have to go and look. Don't tell nobody. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you later. Oh my gosh, that's so embarrassing. Now I'm all frazzled. No, it's um, <laughs> Dwayne, you're up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, my next one is a, a brand that they, they make quite a few things. What I have shown here is a, a silk tie, and that the silk the name of the, uh, the is uh, yeah the name of the tie it's a Brioni. Um, they do high end shirts, suits, uh, ties. I mean they do a, a wide range of of items, but uh, the one I have here is a tie. But I just wanted to show you the the. Uh, whatever the signature what does he call that the tag whatever so that you can look for it um this tie hasn't sold it's got a couple a little bit of issues um it's got a loose keeper and stuff but um brioni is a is a very high-end men's brand um i know ronnie talks about it a lot when he's talking about suits and he sells a lot of of suits so yeah definitely that's a good one Ever heard of it? I'm gonna have to watch for it now. Brioni, I've heard of um, it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm up. Let me move things around. Okay. Hopefully, I didn't talk about this one last time. <laughs> so it is uh, Tom's shoes. Uh, let me see. Where am I? Here we go. Okay. So the ones that I pulled up to show you guys are all pre-owned. And then I sort as highest to lowest. So these could be really collectible. Um, 
So they cost, they're pretty expensive. They cost anywhere from 30 to $60, sometimes more, depending on what style it is. And um, whenever they go into Goodwill, you know, the workers who price them, they're real, they're real lightweight and they don't look like they'd be expensive. So they usually put pretty cheap prices on them. Like I, I'll pick them up for $2.99, $4.99 at Goodwill and then flip them, you know, from anywhere from $20 to $40. So... Is that the brand that gives the gives one away for every pair you buy? Is that the same brand? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yep. And it's like um, they provide no arch support whatsoever, which is probably why I had to stop wearing them. I was uh, wearing them for quite a while. I had several pair. And, uh, now I just stick with the Birkenstock because they provide really good arch support for old people like me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who goes after me? Uh, Jory. Uh, okay. Let me hit that <laughs> screen share button again. I kind of sell odd stuff that you usually don't see. Uh, there we go. So the other thing I got a couple to show you is car symbols and also car switches and like the remote fobs. So there's a mercury symbol. It would have been on a trunk or anything like that. And... Three have already sold, and I've been getting 52 bucks a pop for them. They fit in a padded envelope, and you can just mail them away, so they're super easy to ship. Mercury, Ford, Chevy, Dodge, um, and then same with these, key fobs. These were, yeah, 25 shipped free. Um, you can find them new. Even the Wreckers ones, I find, sell pretty good. And there's another one. Probably shouldn't have the buyer names up there, but. So can some <laughs> can somebody like program that themselves, or they have to bring it to the dealership, or what? These you can program. Um, I forget the sequence, but it used to be like you turn the car to accessories, and then you turn the key off three or four times, hit lock, unlock. Oh. Um, but most key fobs you can program remotely. You don't have to take to the dealership. So it's kind of like uh, chip keys. You do have to go to the dealership. So it's like a sequence you would use, like on a PlayStation controller to. Basically, to sync the fob to the vehicle. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, they sell all the time. Um, and they bring decent, anywhere from $20 to $60. And I always have good luck selling them, new or used, especially hey. if you find higher end ones, Lincoln, Mercedes, BMW. Hey, Jory, Jim's Jams the Junk has a question about key fobs to be emailed to you. Just heads up. They so. emailed to me. I will watch for it. Awesome. You're up, Lonnie. Okay, my turn. All right. Now, this is going to be a weird one, y'all. But I want to keep it weird because if it wasn't weird, y'all probably would have heard of it already. Um, this is something I've been buying uh, for quite a while. These are not mine, uh, but I can typically get these for a dollar or two at yard sales. It seems like this is an electronics learning lab. It's a little newer, fancier kind here. Um but you see how they have the wires and the springs and they make connections and they have usually have books with them and stuff and all kinds of wires. Here's a here's one that's a little older and a little simpler, has electronic components and it still has these little jumper wires and stuff. Yeah, jumper wires. Uh, you can see in the box there. And like this one has a headset and stuff like that. You can typically get anywhere from twenty to fifty dollars for these. Like this is a really Really basic one here, the 30 and one. They have some like 60 and 200 and ones, even. Um, let me look that one up. Too. Man, I remember when those came out, or not when those came out, but when I, I had, I got one when I was a kid that had, you know, the LEDs, you know, for like a clock. Mm -hmm. And uh, you could make it, you know, spell things. And, you know, you thought you were cool. Well, oh, yeah, man. <laughs> oh, I, oh, no, no, I, I get it. I'm right there with you. I, Ooh, here's some that didn't sell very well at all. Um, this depends on which one. Wow, good bolo, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let me do a let me do a sort here. Oh, I guess it's be on the lookout and don't buy them. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've, I've done really well, like with the uh, ones that have wooden sides on them. Yeah. No, I, I've I've seen several that are that go for thirty, forty bucks usually. So. But yeah, that's my bolo, something that sells for like $10 apparently. But no, but, <laughs> but you can typically get them for like a dollar or two and just stick on your price because it's going to cost a little bit to ship them. 
sit on your price and wait for somebody that's like fairly close by. Like for me, I'm in Louisiana. It's probably going to be somebody in Texas or Florida that's going to buy it. So uh, yeah, electronic uh, electronic project kits or learning kits. That's my boy. I would. That is something I would totally pass right by. So um, the other thing you should talk about, though, Lonnie, is to make sure that. Um, that all the things are there. I mean, you don't have to necessarily have the wire, but the, you know, the jumper wires, you can use any, but some of the other stuff, because I've seen a couple where like, uh, you know, some of the components will actually be broken off or, because they're old. Yeah, you'll want to do like a visual inspection, like a, a cursory visual inspection. And then I would say probably the, uh, the project books are important to have. And then, uh, yeah, and, and you think you say, has a lot of wires with it too, you know. But yeah. chain, you're up. All right. So my next bolo is going to be clothing again, but I'm going to show you an example. This is a Tommy Hilfiger one. Vintage rugby bolo, and it says, uh, as Paul Cantu would say, "Tommy for your mommy." Tommy for your mommy. Uh, <laughs> that's right. Anytime says it, I have to say it. <laughs> I know it's amazing. It's amazing. But this is a vintage Tommy rugby polo. Rugby polos sell really well, especially the vintage ones. You're looking at anywhere from if it's polo, um, like forty to sixty dollars, maybe more, and possibly like um, some other brands would be like LL Bean. Um, the rugby polos. I mean, they sell anywhere from like I think it's like thirty to forty. And then um, there's one that's it's a vintage brand. It's called Barbarian, and it's like 40, 50, 60. You know what? I think I saw that Barbarian one before. Um, yeah, that is a good brand, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. All right, Mr. Hill. Oh, me again already? Man, things come around very quickly here. I know. There's <laughs> only five of us. Bam, <laughs> <laughs> bam, bam. All right, my next one again. I'm I do clothing, so this is one of my the ones I have here. It, um, this is a dress shirt, and it's a high end dress shirt from England called Turnbull and Asser. Um, Say again. <laughs> Turn, Turnbull. See, read Turnbull and Asser. <laughs> um, and it, it is right made from England. Um, this one in, has a little bit of damage. That's why it's only selling for fifty. Um, but um, her French cuff, so you can, you know, roll them up and, and use cuff links and stuff. But, um, and they're almost always plain, just like this. They're either uh, micro check or micro, um, they're very plain, but they're very uh, high end business type shirt. Um, I've never seen one that's flashy at all. It's always very reserved. But, um, so there you go. That's another one. Turnbull and Astor, there's the, uh, the mark. And you said that's a British shirt? Is that right? It is. It's made in England, yeah. It's a, actually on the tag it says what? By appointment of Her Majesty's the Prince of Wales shirt makers. I mean, <laughs> it's like so, craziness. So that's why they don't get too out of line with their designs, right? Yeah, they're like I said, they're very reserved, but they're really nice shirt. Once you once you have one or see one and, and feel it, you're like, man, this is a quality shirt. I, I challenge you to come where I live and find one. I don't know if you can find one here. Yeah, well, I don't find them very often. I think I found three is all. But, uh, you know, they are out there, so. Awesome. Cool, man. Okay, so um, I think I'm next. And this is actually my last one, you guys. <laughs> okay, so I did a jewelry uh, thrift haul last week, and I showed this uh, this little fishy brooch right here. I remember seeing that thing. Yep. Yeah, he's he's missing the stone there for his eye, and the, the thing he's not. Yeah, he's not signed on the back, and so um, a viewer on my channel was watching it, and she commented. I wanted to give her um, props. Her name is Robin Coletti, and she said that it looks like an unsigned Hattie Carnegie, and so I did some research, and let me show you guys what I found. So now I bought this in a. Um, in a bag of jewelry I got at the antique mall for $8 and there's several pieces in there. So, I mean, I maybe spent a dollar or less for this. Let me show you. Nice. Okay. Are you seeing it? 
Yeah. yeah. So here's one similar to mine uh, with its eye in place. <laughs> and um, it sold for $47.99. So, wow. Tanya, is that, I mean, that's not a precious gem ice stone, right? I mean, is it something you could go buy a, a little rhinestone or something and, and glue into that? Or yeah. would you not even worry about it? Um, honestly, I'm not an expert at uh, jewelry repairs like that. So I probably uh, wouldn't even attempt it. Hmm. But um, so it's unsigned. And so I'm trying to figure out why in the world would she make these beautiful pieces of unsigned jewelry? So um, this piece, I guess she started making the jewelry in uh, about 1918. And she was originally a clothing designer like Coco Chanel. And um, none of the pieces were marked until I wrote it down. I was looking at some website until 1939. So that means this piece has to date back probably, you know, to the early 30s or late 20s. Holy cow. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I thought That's that cool. was pretty interesting. So bolo that. And if you're not sure, this is a good time for me to plug the jewelry group. So go join the jewelry group on Facebook. It's called Thrifty Jewelry Treasures. And if you have a piece that you suspect it could be the Hattie Carnegie, um, you know, just either make a post in the group or do some research for solds on eBay. So, nice. Yeah. Nice. And, nice. Yeah. And I've got to say, the ladies in that Thrifty Treasures group, um, uh, Bonnie White is really good. Tanya and Angie. I mean, yes, Bonnie and much, Angie are amazing. And, and they can pretty much answer anything. <laughs> so yes. Julie, know, Julie knows a lot too. I got to give her that. Yeah, Julie, yeah. Julie, oh, Venerum. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Very yeah, good. Monica, Monica's getting. In, there's a lot of people. In Monica there. and Lynn Marston. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it, so, it's a, it's great. I mean, I know nothing about jewelry, but uh, mm -hmm. you know, talking to, or just listening in or watching some of their stuff, it it's really. Yeah, and I'm so really thankful well. to have each and every one of them in the group helping people and um, just so thankful for that. So, Tanya, I have a question for you real quick about that piece you just showed. Yeah. Uh, is it more on the designer or, or or is it like the subject matter? Like is it the fish or the subject or, or the designer itself? I would piece? say the subject matter leads information to the designer, right, because it's so unique looking. Um, especially it almost looks like Jade, but I want to say the one that was posted like mine looks like is uh they said it was like loose site. Hmm. So but yeah, I I would imagine it probably had a pretty little red uh ruby eye or maybe a green one. Yeah. Cool. That that is awesome. Very cool looking. That's really mm -hmm. awesome, yeah. All right, Jory. You got another one? Okay, so I do. I grab some stuff out of my collection because obviously video games isn't much of a bolo, but I see a lot of PlayStation 2 games passed over all the time. And oh, there's nobody in PlayStation 2. So I have a bunch here and you'll probably notice a common theme to a lot of these games. I'll have to turn it on an angle because of the light. There we go. And... These are all like this one's actually only like a thirty dollar game. Are you doing the game. anime? Is that what you're saying? Is that Wild Pretty Arms? Pretty much. Wild Arms, uh, Castle. I have no idea. Shikigami. <laughs> it's backwards on my screen. It's hard to read. Yeah. Yeah, mine too. Oh, I can fix that. Hold on. Where's that Hangout toolbox and mirror image? How is it now? No, it doesn't matter. Uh, that mirror image only is for you, Jory, not for oh, us. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Just let you know. <laughs> it <flips> it for <laughs> you <only. laughs> uh, God Hand's another one. Uh, actually, God Hand, if you ever find that's almost a $100 PlayStation game. Really? Wow. Was that for a PS1 or a PS? PlayStation 2. 2, okay. And the first one you uh, showed, which one was that for? They're all PlayStation 2 games. Star Ocean's another decent one. Sudoken is another one. Uh, Okami. Sudoken, yeah, I think that one's about $25 game. Okami, you'll get a good $25, $30. So are these like game. all Japanese-style games? Or They're all that? Japanese, and most of them are role-playing games. Like yeah, role-playing games. games. Yeah. Yep. I don't think I've ever seen any like that. Really common one is Dark Cloud, Dark Cloud one and two. Those are Dude, I just sold games. Dark Dark Cloud two. I just sold the other day, and it is worth. You know, here's here's a bolo, guys. Probably gone up. 
I'm going to steal off the of jury. A lot of times you'll notice that movies are, are that are sequels are usually not as good as the original. But when it comes to video games, a lot of times the sequels are worth more than the original yeah. game. And that is the case with Dark Cloud. That is the case. Uh, Xenosag is another one, too. Two and three is worth more than number one. Part of the Xenosaga series. See, I didn't know that. I had been looking for PS1 games because they're I, valuable too. I had seen like a bunch sell for pretty good money, and I passed just right by all the PS2 games and didn't even didn't even look through them. Right, I don't ever scan them anymore because when I scan them, they're never worth anything. Too. And they've gone up too. Like Persona is another one. If you see any of the Persona series, they're all. Well, I'm just going to start scanning them all. <laughs> Tying, you know what? It's a lot like books. It's a lot like books. Like you know. When you go to scan books, Tanya, mm -hmm. you probably, I, I imagine you probably, like, if, if you looked at a big thing of books and you saw one section that was, like, uh, fiction, that would be the video game equivalent of sport games. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mass market like, paperbacks or sport yeah, games. Yeah, yeah. And, and you can rule all that crap out. And then you can go mm -hmm. straight for, you know, you're, you, I know what you're going for. You're going Unless for, like, you find, like, Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, Tanya goes for like hobbyist books, specialist books, expert yeah. type books. Same thing with video games. Jory, I'll let you take the video game side of that. Go ahead. But yeah, anime for PlayStation. The, the weird ones, horror, stuff that looks offbeat or that you don't normally see. Weird. Everyone has a first-person shooter. If there's a soldier standing there with a handgun, it's probably not worth any money unless it's maybe a PS4 game and it's a modern title. But it's... Odd, odd titles, things that look different, that weird Japanese art. And then horror for PlayStation 2 is a really, really good one. Yeah, that, um, that Japanese art is usually pretty easy to recognize. It's and there cool. are some sports titles. Like if you watch for, I think it's FIFA 2001, it was the last FIFA game made for PlayStation 2, and it's another $100, $120 wait, game. Wait, there's wow. another, wow. There, are, there are a couple of sports titles, man, but like... Very rare, like five... Maybe. Like NCAA, NCAA football, the last one of those they made yeah. is okay. No, good one, yeah. But the, generally, the game is a valuable game. Generally speaking, those sports titles are they call it, they actually coined a term, a phrase for it, shovelware, right? Yeah. So that's all it is. Yeah. yeah. Or sporting sporting yeah. events for NES. <laughs> and or, then you uh, want to watch for uh, Sega CD and Sega Saturn. Sega Saturn especially yeah. because we haven't learned how to emulate Sega Saturn games yet, so you can't even get ROMs of them really easy. So they're still pretty valuable games. That the is FIFA some deep one, that expert knowledge. My mind. <laughs> <laughs> and now we know. <laughs> wow. Actually, sports games for Sega Saturn? Buy sports games. I'll show you why. Huh. This is a Sega Saturn case. Mm -hmm. This is like a regular PlayStation case. If this hundred dollar well, this isn't a hundred dollar game, but if this hundred dollar PlayStation Two game is destroyed, the case mm. I can grab a cheap sports game and replace it. These you can get ten fifteen dollars for just for an empty case that's not cracked because they're really long, they're plastic, and they break super super easy. So that's like a long jewel case. Yeah, a very long jewel case. That's what okay. Sega Saturn games yeah. look like. I always scan, like if I see Sega games, I always scan those for sure because I found those some of those to be valuable for sure. Yeah, Sega's gone up a lot in price. Nice, nice. Well, Lonnie, did you have any more? Bobo? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll keep on like, you know, I'll keep on producing them for you as long as we need to go. <laughs> so uh, let me do a quick screen share. This is something I've always made uh, pretty decent money on, guys. That is Motorola handheld radios. This is not like the kind that you would buy in like a two or three pack that are a lot shorter. This is more like the police style radio, they would or or military style radio. Uh, Dwayne, I'm I'm sure you have probably seen these before. I know that uh, you know a lot of security guys use these these kind of radios um this particular one it only sold for 60 i paid like three bucks for it but the really good thing is i actually sold this wait hang on i gotta look, go to see description uh 
Where is my description? Oh, I got to click on see full item description. See okay. the changes. That is crap. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I sold this radio for 60 bucks as is parts only. I described the physical condition and uh, no guarantees as to whether this radio is in working condition and no returns accepted. So uh, Bolo there is Motorola radios. If you could test them, you'd get even more money. It's probably about a hundred dollar radio. Uh, and I, I see them like not all the time, but a pretty good bit. Cool. Um, Don Maserati in the chat is saying that's a train radio, Lonnie. What does she mean? That's a what? A train radio. She, she's a, she's a train conductor for like Amtrak or something. Oh, right, right, right. I mean, yeah, that could be like, for that too. Yeah. I mean, you could, this used military you call it a military radio train radio security radio you know security it's used across a lot of different career you know a lot of different jobs so sure okay she says people called foamers buy those radios and get them programmed they're a special kind of nuts <laughs> <laughs> nice right okay so i'm selling to foamers apparently <laughs> I think I've heard of something like that before. Uh, oh, look, here, here's another one. Scott Mildred says, I used the HT-1000 when I was a career firefighter. So, yeah. Awesome. Motorola is a great brand when it comes to two-way radios. Uh, Shane, are you, you done with your bolos? Uh, I, can, you I got one more. Um, uh, well, my I would say my last one is um, that – Something, some shoes that I've ran across a few times. I've only seen like three to five pairs probably in the last like five months. Um, but I just started looking for them is Alan Edmonds. Oh, yeah. Those I'm shoes I'm will gonna, sell for a <laughs> large, some of them a big amount of money and some of them like minimum 50, 60 bucks. I actually have and one. So I'm just gonna right like, oh, you got one? Right. Yeah, well, I don't, oh, I don't have one, but I was just gonna show. Yeah, go ahead, Dwayne. Um, I was just gonna show like a, a, uh, really, like a, a sold completed listing page on like, a hundred of them. But okay, okay. Well, here's one that I actually have listed right now. Um, it's a basket nice. weave Allen Edmund toe cap or cap toe is what they're called. Um, they're they're really they, the reason these haven't sold is they're kind of a small size. They're like a seven and a half which is kind of mm -hmm. small for a guy, but, um, you know, you can get them. I, I think I picked these up. These are the Lauderdale. Uh, if you look on the inside right there, you can see it says Lauderdale. That's where the Allen Edmonds will say what model they are. Um, they're usually a leather based bottom with a, 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 a rubber sole. Um, and these usually are pretty good. I, I usually sell them for about 49, 59 bucks, depending. Like I said, these ones I've had for a little bit because of the, uh, because of the odd size um, in, in typically you either want big sizes or a standard size, you know, a nine or 10, because a lot of people will go through these, you know, a lot of people use them for church shoes or whatever like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, a standard size sells really well. And then bigger sizes always sell well because you know, they're hard to get littler sizes. They're just not, there's not that much demand for them. Yeah. That it does seem like a small size, like maybe a young man. Yeah, it, well, it'd have to be like a twelve or thirteen year old because you know if you're uh, you know a young man, fourteen or fifteen, they've already got size ten or eleven. Feet. Exactly. So, <laughs> I know yeah, that's right. They're, these are for little, little, littler guys. And when I and saw what I, oh, sorry, Dwayne, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say when I originally picked them up, I didn't quite realize the size. I looked at them, I was like, oh man, this is awesome. I think I got them for two ninety nine or something like that. So, and yeah. they were in great shape. Great price. Right. I end up shipping them to China. One, oh, like uh, a comp I ran, I found some. <laughs> I found some and I didn't buy them because they were like a little bit wrecked. And it started with a C and I can't remember the style of it. And they were like 60 bucks pretty consistently. Yeah. And uh, Yeah, I got a, a pair of Allen Edmonds that are size 13 listed for I think 70 right now. Nice, yeah. That's a really good uh, – they, 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 they sell all day between 40 and – 40 and 80 bucks, depending on uh, condition. So, Dwayne, did you have another bolo you wanted to share, or are you done? I got one more. Okay. One more for you guys. Now, this one um, actually sells a little bit better in the springtime around Masters, uh, the Augusta Masters. 
Um, this one, um, the reason I'm showing is because it's such a cool color. Um, this one really looks like a green from a, you know, like a golf course. Yeah. That's how green it is. Hard to see in my pictures, but when you see it in real life, I mean, even right there on the tag, you can kind of see how it, it has a, a bit of a texture look, but it really is uh, astounding. And that right there, that little, uh, let me go over here, right here, that is what you're looking for. That is the Masters logo. Um, and so when they do the Masters tournament for golf, uh, every year, right about this time, right around the time of the Masters, these fly off my shelves. I only have, you know, I usually find two or three a year. And uh, come that time, especially like a 2XL or an XL, 2XL, they go quick. So I have a question. I have some Augusta National uh, hats, like a golf hat. But mm -hmm. they're dated. I want to say they, that they're like 2015. Does that affect the pricing or, or can they still sell? Um, I haven't seen any difference in pricing for years because um, I, I think all they're looking for is that la that Masters logo. Yeah. Um, unless it is a, a special event for for the, I got, you know, if there was something special about that year, then it'd probably be worth more. But okay. I don't think of anything being worth less because of the year. Okay, cool. Good to know. Nice. Good to know. George, do so, you have any more? I do. I have one I'll show quickly. That, and then I got one that I want to share mostly because it's one of the best sales I've had. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see that. Uh, the first one is, I think actually, Lonnie, you sold these kind of things before, is this uh, rotary phone. Vintage old dial rotary. And the more wacky the color, the better. Like if you can find them in a red or a pink or a blue. This is kind of like an off-white. I'm just uh, seeing Lonnie on the screen. Yeah, I, I'm not seeing it either yet. Yeah, and there's our <laughs> chat. Everyone to read. Let me try again. How <laughs> about now? Uh, we just see you. Oh, no, we see the phone. Okay, cool. There it is. It's a rotary phone. Um, this one sold 42, but you can get, like I was saying, the, the more funky the color, the better the value they'll be. Um, like some of the pinks and the reds I see fetch upwards of 80 to 100. Wow. Yeah, those are so cool looking. Phones. And then the other thing, just because if you guys ever find it, it's called a Singer sewing machine, and it's oh, a two 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 K. That's what it looks like. That little tiny symbol on the bottom, that plaque. If you ever find one that has a red S on it, then it's a different model of the two 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 K, and it's like a twenty five hundred dollars sewing machine. Wow. This one I took a best offer of fifteen, and I had it listed for eight fifty. 1850 and it took uh like i don't know a week to sell what did you pay for that i came out of a storage unit i paid nothing for it oh my gosh like, that's amazing yeah, yeah. wow <laughs> so there's there's that little symbol there and you can see the s in it and if you see one with the red s actually for any model of singer if you find one with the red s it's more the industrial model and it's usually worth almost double whatever the regular model price is. now where would the red s be where the it's, k is uh no at the top there's that circle it'll say like uh i don't know what it says the singer manufacturer co and then there's a little s that's like a rope s and braided on there it's hard to see rope, but yeah. S, yeah it's probably hard to see but instead there's a circle and there'll be a red s that's what you want to watch for okay cool and the ones wow. made in the u.s are made in more the ones made in the uk will have a conversion power box on there and they're worth a little less. hey i just had a sale guys did you really i don't have my phone uh. Yeah, I don't have my phone to prove it though. My <laughs> phone's right. upstairs. What'd you sell? It was how, how do you know? Women's Levi's five fifty relaxed fit tapered leg wash jeans, twenty seven nineteen. Sweet. Cheers. Nice. I'll have a sip. <laughs> That's oh. a good price. Yeah, okay, man. I want to see uh, uh, mm -hmm. um, Shane. Um, I'm waiting for this shot. You All know, right. we've been Let's waiting the it. whole time here. Let's do it. Engaged. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> I can feel it from here. <laughs> <laughs> That's like rubbing alcohol in a glass. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like moonshine then, right? That's how us Canadians do a cleanse. We don't drink the lemon water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel pretty cleansed right now. Burn it out. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, Shane? What's that? What was that? What, what did you take a shot of? That's Jory's uh, uh, alcohol he, I won at his contest. Oh, it's, uh, the okay. Toronto from the Toronto Distillery. That's so it's, awesome. It's so yeah, strong. Yeah, it's organic it, mash bill. 
<laughs> and they age it in a copper pot, not in an oak cask, so it really stays it's, strong. You so don't get that smooth moonshine. Yeah, it's smooth, smooth, moonshine, yeah. smooth about it, yeah. I'm sure. I am can't so call impressed. It moonshine here, so it's white whiskey. <laughs> I am so impressed that you shipped that and got it to shame without it breaking. Well, oh, yeah, you know, it, really good. it was labeled as a collectible bottle. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Full of water. Pure right? Later, Pure Later <laughs> told me to do it. I went to Pure Later because I, I checked all over how to ship booze, and there's so many hoops to go through. And the Pure Later <laughs> guy said, so you're shipping a collectible bottle. I said, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love Ontario. I mean. It's half true. That's right. Just didn't just Jory, the contents of a collectible bottle. Jory, when you did your show where you gave that bottle away, I'm like, this crazy Canuck is going to ship a bottle of booze <laughs> <laughs> internationally? I mean, and you did I just admit to it? I mean, I didn't ship it internationally. I dropped it off at his house. <laughs> yeah, he, he totally came over and he flew here. And, uh, yeah. Dude, if, we if, had you could, if you and... could ship that, you could ship anything. Did you know that? <laughs> well, it's the, the pound of, of weed on the way, don't it. worry. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, with that being said, let's discuss who's <laughs> going to host the next show. <laughs> I think we need to get in touch with Andy and see if Andy wants to do it. What do y'all think? Yeah, I think it's Andy. Is it Andy's turn? I think so. Just okay. To do it. Sounds good to me. I don't know if he can do it or not, though. So uh, that's all the more reason, guys, to, if you haven't already, join the Reseller Six Pack mm -hmm. Facebook group. And yes. you will stay abreast of uh, stay abreast of where the show is going to be. And Tanya looked kind of nervous when I kept saying abreast just now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this is my channel, remember? Listen, I never know, you guys. I just never know what they're going to say. <laughs> 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 How are you? Pretty good. <laughs> we gotta yeah, read this. We gotta read this, guys. Krillin eight seven six. Lonnie, <laughs> when Jory <laughs> sent me the syrup, it had enough bubble wrap to send a baby in. Do you <laughs> ship babies in bubble wrap, dude? <laughs> I mean, if you want to buy one, I can maybe find you one. It might cost extra. No, like, here's a small story. When I opened this, it took me, like, a good solid 20 minutes to, like, cut through the bubble wrap. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, but, I mean, who would even think to ship a baby in bubble wrap? That is weird, Krillin. <laughs> You would obviously you use holes too. you would obviously use peanuts for a baby, dude. That's so weird. <laughs> yeah, jeez, <laughs> get it right. It has to be able to breathe. Come on. <laughs> this is some reseller geek humor here, guys. So, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. I basically pack things like Jim Carrey is going to ship it from the first uh, Ace. <laughs> and kick <him> off. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. Okay. Hey, D Dwayne's auction too this Sunday. It'll be me on there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah that's, right. Is that's right. Most of those video games you just saw will be auctioned off. Nice. Well, there you Plus, go. Here, I'll show you what the gem is because I have a three hundred dollar game I'm gonna auction off. Oh wow. I'll go get it. Dang. Three hundred dollar game. Yeah, hopefully you're not uh, attached to it. <laughs> Now for like the next six months, I'm going to be scanning every PS2 game I come in contact with. <laughs> Me too. You know what's exciting? You could possibly, guys. You could make some money off it. You could get a dollar, a, a $300 game for a dollar at Jory's auction. There it is. <laughs> it's Earthworm Gem on the Sega CD Special wow. Edition. It's in mint condition. The CD looks like it's never been touched. And it brings like $250 to $300. That's crazy. Wow. What's that? Super, What's kind of it again? super rare. Super rare. That light's probably wreaking havoc on it. I, I want to see the disc again, Jory. Let me see the disc. Watch me drop it and crack it. Oh, that would suck. Oh, Is yeah. It showing up clear? And there's the back of it. The back of it's pristine, huh? That looks mint. Well, I'm a collector, so all my games stay pretty mint. Yeah. And, uh,. So the charity too will probably be for my wife's sister's good friend. She just had her four month old and she got diagnosed with cancer. So we're doing a oh, oh no! Oh, wow, man. So 
Yeah, that'll be one of the top ones. That and a vintage original Metal Gear Solid fabric wall poster. That the only way you would have been able to get it is if you work for Konami on the development team or you're part of their promotion team. Holy so cow. it's also a pretty That's unique cool. item. So some cool stuff. So Jory, you need to promote, you need to promote that auction hard. Like yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You need to promote it hard in your circles, your video game yeah, circles. Yeah, 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 I've got a couple of video game groups sure. I'm part of, so I'm gonna blast it off into those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. The more the more people, the more uh, video geeks you get, the better your chances of selling that for a good m amount of money. And then I got some other old random silverware and antiques and old tools and stuff. Some old neat electronics. Fun. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's cool. 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 <laughs> yeah. So this will be the first time we do it uh, internationally. So. Yeah. It'll be something different. How is that going to work with the shipping? I know. I'm keeping it mostly small items. Yeah. So I can send so a track smart. packed for like under 14 bucks for most of the items. I might even just, if anything sells for over 50 bucks or something, I'll just eat the shipping cost. Yeah. Can you do that? Like, like what does it cost Probably. to ship something to me for the weighs like a pound? Like a, bo like I could a bottle of maple syrup, say. Uh, if I send it just like Canada Post, I could probably ship it for like ten bucks to you. With with tracking, twelve to fourteen. Without tracking, eight to ten. Okay, that's not horrible. Yeah, no, not no, bad. it's not too bad. So, like, you know, this I with a video game with tracking, twelve, thirteen bucks. Without yeah. tracking, like six. Okay. So it's not too bad. Um, but then big things too, like it's not. I don't know. Those printers and stuff run me thirty, forty dollars to ship to the U.S. It's a decent amount, but. Now, when you say when sale. you say to the U.S., do you have to worry about what part of the U.S. is it the same? It doesn't change. It doesn't change too much, unless it's like right on the border. If it's going to Buffalo or Michigan, but other than that, as soon as you kind of get past those northern states, it's basically the same. Whether it be Texas or Las Vegas, it's going to run me roughly the same, give or take three bucks, four bucks. That's, oh. that's crazy, man. Because if I ship something to say Tanya, it'd probably be ten bucks. I could ship that same thing to Dwayne yep. and it could be 30 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. It changes yes. quite a bit for here. Ours doesn't vary too much either. Unless it's going to like noon of it or somewhere stupid like that yellow knife way up in the middle of nowhere where it's like a tiny eight person plane takes mail every six months. <laughs> <laughs> Which I, a guy bought a video game off Amazon. I went to ship it and the lady's like, this will be six to eight months. I went, pardon me. So I contacted the guy who lived in noon of it and he says, yeah, every, about every six months they send a plane and medication and letters and the important stuff comes first and food and then regular things. So I don't think <laughs> That's it's Amazon crazy. Prime up there. <laughs> hey, uh, wow. So I just I just got a message uh, telling you from from Andy Parrothead Picker uh -huh. and he he is going to host next week. Oh so. okay, awesome. Cool. Very That's good. Great. All right. Well, we are going to wrap this up. I want to thank everybody in the chat for joining us tonight. It's always glad, uh, always good to see each and every one of you here. And we will see you next week on Andy, the Parrothead Pickers channel at uh, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Sunday night. Bye, everybody. See ya. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.